Welcome to American Self-Defense Concepts. I'm Nick. I'm Doug. And welcome to Weapons of Opportunity. Welcome back to Fire Central. Well, we do have a fire a hundred miles away from us. That's why we have all the smoke in the air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of America's Self-Defense Concepts, Weapons of Opportunity. I'm Nick. I'm Doug. All right, so today, this one's going to be more of a uh, kind of like a cultural kind of weapon. And got to give you a little history with it today, show you some of the applications, because it's not really all just one weapon. Um, uh, this is more relating to flexible weapons. And I don't have an authentic one. I have yet to find one. But today we're going to be talking about a sarong or malong. And that's not to be confused <laughs> with a thong in Daytona Beach. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, the sarong or melongs, uh, they originate out of Indonesia, uh, where like you would have uh, Kali in the Filipino martial arts. Um, and it's you, a sarong melong, it's a, a garment they wear in Indonesia. So what they would actually do, it's actually bigger than this, they would actually use it to wear, uh, both men and women, they used to wear it as, well, they could wear it as a skirt, and then and it's all looped together like this. So, I mean, they would use it to wear as a skirt or they would use it as a sash where they could sit there and uh, carry, if they were needed to carry groceries or even babies, anything like that. But back in the day, it's also used as a weapon. A last ditch up. Yep, very last resort kind of weapon because I mean even using that it could be used against you as well so I, I mean there's pros and cons to it but overall I mean it's pretty neat because not only can it be uh, the principles with that that like a sarong melong just be applied to those garments it could be applied to lots of different kinds of weapons like western civilization as for example I have here an infinity scarf I mean a lot of women and even men nowadays, I mean, this is even a men's infinity scarf you got off the Amazon. Um, could be used as that. Another thing guys wear most of the time, belts. Sit there and use a belt with the same principles. Or if there's rope or chains laying around, same idea. They're, they're all flexible weapons and you can do the same functionalities with the techniques that the Indonesians used with a Malang or Sarong. And it even came out of India as well, like uh, bandits in India would sit there and use those garments and use them as weapons as well. So, lot, lots of things and history behind this one today. Was it in Slumdog Millionaire? Slumdog Millionaire? Yeah. I mean, not the main part of the movie, but uh, I'm trying to think back in the movie and see, see if there's uh, anything shown with anybody wearing the traditional garments. I don't know, to be honest with you. But... Totally off topic. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, even uh, if you wanted to see something like that more in action, or well, like principles of how they would use a sarong or malong, uh, the movie The Accountant was Ben Affleck. There's a scene in there where he uses his belt in one of the scenes against one of the, the guys that's coming after him. And he uses the tactics and techniques that you would use with that in that scene. You know how I feel about choreography. choreography. I know. Yeah, they can make it look cool, but if we're going to go for cool, John Wick. John Wick. John Wick. Yeah. Well, equalizer, too. Well, equal, yeah, he has some pretty good stuff in there, too. Yeah, and which his is more Filipino and Kali, anyway. Other one that uses that, Bourne. Jason Bourne uses the Filipino martial arts in Kali. Yeah, he actually uh, 
the when he does the uh, roll the newspaper mm -hmm. that comes out on a sheet a lot. So yeah. <clears throat> now we got uh, talking about movies. <laughs> <laughs> and that, it all falls falls. It works as a good. It's not right. <laughs> right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to give you some ideas um, and show you a few different snippets of how we would use this as a weapon and show you what kind of things it could be, how it can be applied. So we're going to take you over here and show you how we use it. All right. So I said we we're going to get to a little bit of application with it here. So again, we're going over the surround my lawn, how it's used. So first thing that I like to do with it, if I need to close distance, they would sit there and use it to swing. And when they were using this, if there's water around to help with the effects, they would dip it in water and get it wet. Like a snapping a wet towel. No, no, I'm not a pin like, state. Yeah. <laughs> no pin state, no pin state. So, like they would dip it in water, or sometimes they would put uh, a stone or a rock inside that as well, and wrap it up in there and start beating them with it. Wow! Use it as a flail. But the idea with it, with it using with the long range here, I said dipping in water or putting a rock in it, they would use it to swing at an opponent, either coming at them, and they would start high, go for the eyes and the face. And then they would come back straight down low, come up high again, all the while getting closer to the target. Or if they needed to, if someone was attacking or coming closer to them, they used to create space. Okay. And I mean, mine, yeah, uh, it's not made really out of the material they would use for it. I don't like this infinity scarf much because it's very stretchy still. I'd like to be more taut with it and a little bit of heavier material because if you get some good material like that, it's going to hurt even hitting with that. A wood? <laughs> okay. And then even off, let's say he threw a punch. One thing they like to do is sit there and they go here with it and they would sit there and use it as a snap. Bam! Hit along the face. And if you're doing that pretty hard, and again, if it's wet too, it's going to be a good forceful snap. Okay, and I mean, one, it can conceal what you're doing next, or just good little force to get them move back a little bit, and depending on where you're hitting. So they hit a face, you do it here, or even up along the shoulder. Bam. Okay. You can even use it for more even takedowns with that too. So I mean, if he's Coming. Bam. Okay. What? Hit me in the nuts! <laughs> okay. So, I, so the first one was using it as a distance, either to close the distance or create the space between you. Okay. Next one. So we're going to use it with a sash application here. Okay, like they would back in Indonesia. So, what they're gonna, what you would use of this off of, so I'm wearing this as a sash, so I can throw a punch, okay? I'm right here, okay? I'm like pop, come back up, knee, get the bend, okay? Go for a modified guillotine here. Like you see in UFC, come up for a guillotine, but what I'm doing in this process, I'm not really putting the choke on yet. What I wanna do is, with this hand, grab the sash that I'm wearing, okay? So at that point, with still control here, I'm gonna push his body through with this arm. All the while, I'm gonna pull and loop this over his neck, okay? As I'm pushing him through, I got that on, bring that up, I can <coughs> tighten, okay? You'll find that they choke a lot with these. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the application with it really as a sash and I mean there's a lot more with that sash on there but I'm not going to get too crazy with this uh, on a YouTube video if you want to learn how to use it come down to a class ok 
Okay. And then the other application they would have for it is using it as double weave. God damn. Using it as a double weave. Okay. The double weave have more on their hands like this. Okay. And what I'm going to show you with this is what they call uh, a sparrow loop. Okay. And so we're going to go off of four counts. So he's going to throw four punches here, starting with his lead hand. Okay. So we'll do parry, 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 boom, snap. Okay. Right there. Okay. And you notice what that did to his body right there, right? Okay. So even here, what I'm going to do is turn. Come off control. Okay. And you sit there and wrap that around his neck. So even if it's here, come up, boom, right here. Okay. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come behind him. Oh, yeah. So turn. Okay. I'm going to have this motion right here with it. And I'm going to be facing away from him and walking at the same time because now he's going to have to follow. Okay. So he was want to try to turn and escape out of it, okay, sit there and follow through. Turn it the other way. Nobody chokes me without my consent. <laughs> oh, you like it, you know. Okay? And even if you try pulling it down, which most people are going to try to pull that down off the neck, that's okay. Let him pull it down. So if he keeps pulling it down, eventually he's going to get over his shoulders and look. He's, the more he pulls it down, the more he's closing his arms. And all I gotta do at this point is just turn a kid. Bam! Yeah. Okay. And then you do take down after that and keep them in that. But that's the sparrow loop right there. So the idea behind that, again, snap it, snap down, come up, you know, and then you want to think this arm, even with this hand, pull the head if you need to. Because your idea is look at this arm up over their head so that way they sink right into that sparrow loop. And again, turn, boom, right here. Okay, so that's some of the things that you can do with the surround lump. And again, you don't have to use a scarf or a closing guard, but you can use a belt, you can use rope, a chain. All of them have the same application. And then, what else is good for, say he had a knife, okay? So, I'm gonna cut you, S.A. So he's got a knife, okay? The other thing again is reach, and I can use this against a weapon, okay? Now, am I gonna get too crazy with that? No. The good, what I'm wanting to show you with this is it's gonna give me less chances of cutting my hand and trying to strike at the weapon till I can get control of host, okay? To where I can get control of that arm. Okay. Works a good distraction too. I mean, once you get that post, ha ha Except I totally missed. Yeah, you totally missed. <laughs> so even after you get the post, and I don't want, I don't really want this or have no use for it, I guess the post, I can put it up in his eyes. <clears throat> Hide what's coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's even the same, what he just did, same application you can use with a baseball hat. Which is regular hat in general. Yep. Okay. So, anything, either on your person or around, you can use a weapon. Now, things to keep in mind with uh, wearing this. Again, it can be used as a weapon against you. So if I'm wearing it as a sash, and we're going in here at it, he can grab that and pull me to the ground or choke me with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, even simple, I mean, some of those are long enough where, I mean, it's a simple pull, especially if he's falling to the ground and we're going, he's going to hold on to that, I'm going down with him. Okay. And again, I can get choked with it now. I mean, yeah, some people have a concern with having it in the double weave, too. It's like, oh my god, he's going to grab the middle of that. It's like, it's okay. You just, 
I mean, you want to treat this as an extension of yourself anyway. Yeah, is there going to be some effect with it? Yeah, but you know, I still have empty hand techniques I can use. Okay, I can go out of that. So yeah, don't worry if somebody grabs that. Don't don't resist and try to pull them back. Like, oh my god, let go! It's not that's not your weapon. Your hands your weapons at this point. So I mean, <laughs> open that up. Get him close to you so you can use that. Okay. So that's really all I got to show you today with the sarong melong techniques. Okay, so like I said today, we showed you more how to use the uh, sparrow loop with that, creating distance, okay, and then also, you know, hey, this is something that might protect my hand if he's coming at me with a knife, okay, until I can sit there and get in close enough where I can get control of his weapon arm. And then again, this, these techniques don't apply just to this, it applies to multiple flexible objects. We appreciate you guys watching our video. Always feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and also check out the links for the products we have posted in our video.